let's start, Aaron. Uh, you, I, I sent you a text, and I asked you, hey, what do you want to do for the first uh, topic on Friday? And you said, let's talk about me. That's exactly what you said. Actually, I said, let's talk about Pickle first. Yes, because we should we should shout out. She's wearing her San Saba versus Lano get Dave Campbell's Game of the Week favorite. shirt. Da- yeah, San Saba what? Greg Tepper? Uh, the Armadillos. Armadillos. Yes. Um, I was meeting the native stomping grounds of one homecoming queen, Ashley Pickle. Um, San Saba. Uh, Lano actually defeated San Saba. They I mean, because they went on an unbeaten They were undefeated season. until the semifinals. Semi-fi. Correct. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, but... Um, so you wanted to talk. This ta- was a big deal because this was the first time Pickle had gone back to cover. Correct. Them. So this mm-hmm. was this was a monumental day, and in honor of Ashley Pickle not being here, <laughs> not having to put up with us today, I decided to wear it. Pickle, we miss you. We yes. love you. Okay. And we hope you're praying over us. Well, she she certainly is not. She is definitely just she's she's not working. Why would she watch this show if she wasn't working? That's true. I mean, your digital director and is so likely not watching when he's supposed to be either. Well, and that's a good that's a good segue. Because I think people, maybe people know this, maybe people don't, but you are engaged to be wed. You have been engaged to be wed for a minute now. About as long as you and I have been on the air together, which I don't is think that's a true. long time. I don't know if that's true, but. No, it is. We've been out, what, seven years? Okay, so okay but engaged, I mean. I mean, you know. Oh, enga- yeah. engaged. Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been dating for like 20 years. Right. And so. And so, uh, for those who don't know, Aaron is engaged to our digital director, uh, William Wilkerson, who has been on this program before, uh, against his will. Uh, he has been on his, this program before. Lucky, lucky. Uh, but he uh, – and, and so, I guess, let's have a, a, a romance story. Because, in a lot of ways, you guys are a story about Texas high school football love. Okay, it's technically – let me let me asterisk this. Uh, it's, it's a story of how Texas high school football – pitted us against one another only to kind of bring us together, I guess. And I don't want to make this sappy because it's completely not. In fact, um, our good friend Sarah Merrifield and Paige Schnorbach of Fox Sports Southwest um, were asking me not long ago um, how William and I met. They're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I've ever asked you this question. How did you guys meet? It's like a question I've received like a million times since we started dating half a century ago um, and obviously since we got engaged. And um, – I was like, believe it or not, believe it or not, and many don't believe, it was actually on a Texas high school football field, which is kind of funny, right? Here's the best part of the story. When we met on that field from afar, I despised him because at the time, let me set this up, at the time, I was covering college football recruiting for scout.com. Um which was also part of Fox at the time. He was covering college football recruiting for ESPN, like Horns Digest, whatever site he thought he was like, I don't know, crushing at the time. Um, And so we were competitors. I was not competitive at all. And so I wasn't, okay, let me, let me, okay, so it's 2012. Coach is screening my calls. Bob Wager is screening the calls. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So anyway, okay, so, so let's go, so here it is. The year is 2012. Uh huh. Fall of 2012. Right. Miles Garrett is one of the top five probably, players yeah. like in the country. Right. Top in Texas. I mean, yeah, he's he's a one commodity. So, I um I got to an Arlington Martin practice. Um, it was like a preseason. It was like training camp, and um I I had been there. And again, I mean, it was like 300 degrees at like 5 a.m. when this thing kicked mm-hmm. off. Texas. Uh, I'd been there. I'd been there since like before dawn. You know, I was like, I'm going to be there for the entire practice and then I'm going to get my interview at the end because I feel like that's kind of, you know, it's like probably the way to go about things. That that is that is Greg Tepper. So when one William Wilkerson of ESPN.com and his little Ray-Bans rolls up with like 20 minutes to go. Was he legit wearing Ray-Bans? He's about to get this interview with Miles Garrett over me. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. I'm across the field. I'm like, oh, hell no. He didn't just roll up in his Ray-Bans with like 20 to go. And I've been here before the sun came up. Mm. Look, who, who got, look, and who got the first Miles Garrett interview? Greg Tepper. Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say Will. 
again, I'm not competitive at all. But here's the thing, though, is that at this point, it strikes me that you're hating you're hating the game instead of the player. And you're hating the guy who he knows that he's going to be there after practice, that he's not going to be able to get until after practice. So if practice starts at 6 a.m. and practice isn't over till 7.30, you don't get any bonus points for being there at 6 a.m. I'm dedicated. I showed up for an entire Bob Wager practice. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I was mm-hmm. in, I'm in, I mean, I'm here for more than just, I'm not just the reporter that rolls up for the interview. Like I'm in, I'm, I'm a part, I, I am in on, on putting in the time and, and really putting in the attention. I want to, I want to spread the attention among sure. the entire team. Right. Okay. So anyway, I'm I get just, it. I'm just, I'm trying to make an excuse here. If you you really so, are. Okay, so here's you got so beat and it's fine. If you fine. think you're making me feel bad, I, I will, I will tell you this. I actually did end up feeling kind of bad. So this is kind of where the like Disney love story <laughs> comes into play. So I, I'm like, you know, I get the first interview and I'm like, woo, I'm like dancing off to my car, like wanting to, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, kind of throw it in his face. Like, what up? Like, I've been here mm-hmm. the whole time and I got it before you. And Bob loves me more. What's up? Um, and I get home and I'm living with one of my college uh, best friends, former teammate at the time. And I'm like, you will never guess. I'm telling her, I'm like, you will never guess who rolled up to the practice. Because, again, she knew how much, like, I was, like, against him because we were, like, competitors. Mm-hmm. I was like, he rolled, you know, I'm telling her, I'm like, he thought he was just going to get that, you know. We're, we're like, what a D word, you know. And. you know, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I will say. I appreciate you holding back, and that's a true broadcast professional because I think a lot of people would be like, this is an internet show. I can say whatever I want. No, this is also a high school fo- – Texas, high- and we're telling a Texas high school football love story, so I, so I should probably keep it censored. That's a good point. So we're like, okay, what – and at that time, at that moment, Greg Tupper, yeah. I get a DM. William Wilkerson, the, Mr. Ray-Ban, slides in the DM and writes me this, like, nice note of, like, Hey, saw you at Arlington Martin today. Just want, you know, didn't get a chance to catch up. No, you were busy. Didn't want to bother you. But, you know, I just want to let you know how much I admire your work. And Oh, what know, a how, jerk. How much? Yes. And I'm like, no, you can't be nice. You're supposed to hate I'm him. I'm supposed to hate you. Yeah. Why are you being nice? Yeah. And I was all like, woo. I got the, you know, I was being like the, I don't know. I was being kind of immature. And so he wrote this nice note about how much he likes my work and everything. Like, or admire it, whatever. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. So then I told Kelsey, I'm like, now I feel bad. Um, Fast forward. It was like maybe a couple weeks later. It was the Lancaster John Tyler game. A number of prospects on the field at that game. So there were a ton of reporters there. And that was actually the first time. And he, I knew he was at the game. Okay. This is going to sound so stupid. I knew he was at the game because I saw his tweets. So like, like from the game. So I'm like, oh my God, he's here. So I'm like, oh my God. Like. I don't know. It's, I don't want to make the first move because, again, I have, like, this ego. So, I'm like, I'm not going to talk to him first. Um, he made the first. He then, So, after sending this nice DM, he makes the first move, comes up, taps him on the shoulder, introduces himself. He's all nice. And at that time, I was like, oh, my God, he's kind of cute, too. <sighs> Long story short, I don't, I don't know how to feel about this story, you guys, um, because it was kind of like a – I hated him and now I kind of like him and I guess we're going to be together forever type of thing. Um, and I'm hoping Greg Tepper that Bob Wager is no longer screening your calls because I felt it was, it was, it was critical sure. in sharing this not so hallmark love story that we had the, the love story that began on a Texas high school football field. I felt it was important. We had the coach of that field on to help share the story. Coach Wager, do you read us? Oh, I'm, I got you loud and clear. I remember it well the day that it happened. I'm thrilled to be a part of the story here, and thank you for the invitation. Okay, wait. First of all, first of all, many would call you crazy for, like, actually wanting to spend a Friday in the offseason with the two of us, so thank you for that. I actually just elevated my social status. I'm oh, jeez. I'm about this deal right now. Okay, so so I guess, Coach, one, one question I have is— Why do I feel like this story is now boring? I, Bob's going to be— No, 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 no. I just want to know— <laughs> I, I just— I, I want to know, audience. Coach. Like you know, you're a guy who's been pretty successful on the Texas high school football field. Uh, you've you've coached some of the very best players in 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 America, stuff like that. How high up on your list of accomplishments is, um, let's say, organizing the matchmaking of Aaron Hardigan and her future beau? 
Boy, what a great question, Thank Tep. You, you know, Thank I you. mean, I, I, I typically like to speak about the value that we bring in regards to the relationships that we build. Obviously, we don't get to continue to do that if we don't win games. But when you can find a way to connect two elite human beings mm-hmm. like Will and Aaron, mm-hmm. uh, it's got to go right there to the top of the stack. Well, listen, um, that leads me to my next question. Who do you like more? Ooh, wow. <laughs> Okay, well, no, you put pre- me on the pre- spot, pre- and I pre- <laughs> and I, how, I distinctly okay. remember a dinner invitation at one point um, where we had an opportunity to to sit down and talk ball. Oh, and um, early on in that conversation, when when you disclosed that Will was going to be there, uh, mm. I could not contain my enthusiasm. Okay, I didn't so know if we could go I gotta here. give I gotta give the nod to your fiance. Okay, time out. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted me to go here, but since you went there, here. Okay, so Tepper. So I ca- so Bob and I were originally scheduled to go grab lunch or dinner or whatever mm-hmm. it was, and and at the same time, that was like that was when William and I were first kind of like talking, kind of hanging out. He was in town, and William's like, "Hey, let's grab dinner tonight." I'm like, I'm thinking like, well, shoot, like I already have plans with Bob, but he also knows Bob, so maybe I could call Bob and see if we could make it like, you know, like. William could be our third wheel. Um, <laughs> so Okie dokie. I call Bob and I'm like, oh, like, I don't know if he's going to, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, he'll be OK. I'm like, I'm like, hey, Bob. Um, I said, you know, I know we're doing dinner. I said, I, I, I wasn't sure if I can bring a friend. I said, my friend William Wilkerson is in town and I was wondering if he could tag along. Bob goes, Bob's response. You kidding me? I've had a man crush on that dude for like five years. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> His response, and I'm like. Well, okay, then maybe I should see myself out on this dinner. <laughs> like, maybe I should see myself out the door here. <laughs> Coach, you want to respond to this slanderous accusation? Hey, she's, she, she's growing on me. You know, she's growing on me. She's, she's coming on strong for sure. But, uh, but okay, well, here, what, a, so, what a fabulous human being he is as well. Uh, well, listen, he, yeah, he is. But at the time, Bob Wager, I, and I need you to defend me here. It was, the year was 2012. Miles Garrett was a wanted commodity. Breaking news here on Texas football today. Um, and we, I, I was, I was at an Arlington, it was like training camp, I want to say. It was like preseason workout. I wanted to, you know, get a video interview with Miles. So what I did was I showed up at the start of practice. I was going to be there the entire practice before I got that interview. So I was there before the sun came up to get that interview. Mm-hmm. When did R- T- Greg Tepper remind Bob Wager when William Wilkerson decided to roll up for the same interview? Like five minutes before practice ended. And what was he wearing? I don't know. I wasn't listening. Ray Bans. He okay. was a total D word Ray Ban <laughs> <Jeez>. wearing. <laughs> I'm trying to censor. We're working. We're working show, blue Bob. here, no, Coach. No, Bob, you know this as well as anyone. I was like, oh hell no. He's a cr- he rolls up across the field, and I see him from afar, and I'm like, oh hell no. You didn't just roll up five minutes before practice going to end and think you're getting the same interview. I've been here before the sun came up. I did end up getting the interview before him, and I definitely made sure to rub that in. And I was also like, bye, Bob. Bob Wager loves me more. Great to see you. Like, I was totally trying to rub this in. And what did I get when I, when, when I, when I, um, when I arrived home that day? William Wilkerson had slid into the DMs and wrote me, like, the nicest note. He's like, hey, I saw you at Martin earlier today. You know, I, I, I knew you were busy. I didn't want to bother you. I just wanted oh to tell you gosh. how much I really admire your work. And, I ju- and I'm and i like, no, no, this is not how this goes. I'm supposed to hate you. You're not supposed to be nice. Well, and that's how it happened. And and now and now they're getting married. Okay. So, Coach, while I've got you on, because I know Aaron wants to talk about nuptials and stuff like that. One question I have. You are a happily married man. You've been you you've you've been you've been married for uh, I mean I don't want to date you let's just say you've been married for more than a year, you know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah. That's so. Can you give Aaron one piece of of marriage advice? <clears throat> See, Boy, it's, I, and, and I here's the thing: it's tougher. To it's tougher to give it to to uh, to a bride than a groom because for a groom, it's pretty easy. It's like just listen to what she says. Yeah, I, I would say to start, never use his razor. <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, why? What? Because sometimes the sometimes men's razors are are better. Well, and and that provides a value for you. However, uh, when it comes to the delicate skin on the face, mm-hmm. you know, we we know we exactly the face? state of our razor after every mm-hmm. use as to when to switch it out, when not to. So I would start with that, and and then I think a one B, if I may tap, sure, is. 
the garage is the only room in the home that we get to decide, mm. right? <clears throat> the garage is not a catch-all. The garage is the origin of home organization. And so if we do not win the last game of the season sure. and we get ousted from the playoffs, then I like to dedicate two full days in the garage before mm. I fully rejoin Stay society, and that's garage. for organizational um, organizational use. Coach, I got to be honest. That seems entirely fair. That seems that seems like like and maybe I'm just speaking from a from a from a, from a dude's perspective, but I'm like, yeah, that that sounds that checks out. Is like, you know, especially coming to the end of, of of a season. And while I've got you here, I will ask you one football question, which is, we go back to 2020. You guys um, end up bookending your season with teams that end up playing for state championships in in uh, in Denton Ryan and uh, South Lake Carroll. You win every game in between. Um, I'm interested in how you would assess what you guys were able to accomplish in your 2020 season. Not to completely steer the the, the football show back onto the football tracks, but uh, no, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, in in how you assess what you guys were able to accomplish in 2020. Well, I think I think first, in, in all honesty, Tep, um, we played right. So mm-hmm. 43 yeah. states in the country did not have an opportunity to play when we first went to strength and conditioning camp on the 8th of June. We took the mentality of if we do this well, maybe they'll give us one more day. And, and we took that. We're, we're actually still doing it, social distancing, keeping mm-hmm. them spread out, making sure we got all our protocols in place, trying to, re- to revise all of our practice habits that we'd learned for 25 years and, and change everything to try to keep it as safe as possible. And so you know, we had a number of cancellations throughout the course of the year. We ended up playing a really good, um, College Park team at Grossbeck High. Grossbeck had a mm-hmm. game that was out of town. They basically left the gate open for us. We had, you know, no cheer, no band, uh, no announcer. We we sat in the end zone at halftime, crisscross applesauce, and, <laughs> and, and made our adjustments. I think the biggest victory for us, and especially for our sanity, uh, that's kids, coaches, and our community, was getting the opportunity to get out there on the field and have a sense of normalcy every day. And, and that normalcy occurred from 3 to 5 o'clock at practice. He's Bob Wager. When he is not coaching uh, the Arlington Martin Warriors, he is uh, playing donuts. matchmaker and doing donuts in in the snow. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> on that note, i got to get this story in. This is a ratings booster. So I, I, will, I will let our fine viewers, listeners, and your fans know. I will assure them that the Wagers were A-OK during the recent snowmageddon, ice apocalypse, whatever you want to call it. Um, they were well. They were safe. In fact, Bob Wager, I hear you were making lemonade of lemons. Well, we, we, we certainly tried to. I, I think the first was an assessment of, of uh, the kids that we have in this school, mm-hmm. what, what their situation was. We, we made several trips with uh, a truck bed full of wood and, and dropped them off, um, <clears throat> you know, at those that didn't have power and brought them a little starter log, taught them how to build a box fire, tried to keep them warm. In between wood trips, uh, we, went act- we actually went out to the lake. Uh, we got the tube and the uh, tow rope from the back of the boat. And we tied it onto the back of the truck. I've got a 14-year-old son and a a 12-year-old daughter. And uh, we put them in a helmet, shoulder pads, and a padded girdle and tied them onto the back of the truck and dragged them around in the parking lot, went went East Coast style. So we had a good time in the snow here. I love it. I love it. Coach Wager, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for helping to relive uh, this uh, this this love story. William and... William uh, says thank you for helping ruin his life. We love wow. you. <laughs> cannot wait. Cannot wait to it... celebrate with you at the wedding. Me too, guys. Admire your work. Thanks for having me on today. There he goes, Bob Wager, the head coach of the Arlington Martin Warriors, joining us here on Texas Football Today. 